All right. First kind of official day of holidays. It's Monday, so, I mean, my holidays began Friday afternoon, but it's Monday now. What would prompt me to pull over on the side of the road and make a video? I've been going over some of the things that I've seen the past couple of days, and, and I wanted to make some observations with regards to uh, largely what's been going on with Fiona. And I want to start by just saying what everybody should know and what only seems some of us do. Fiona is a sweetheart. Um, she's a great person. She's considerate. She's intelligent. She's articulate, well-spoken, compassionate, you know, reasonable, respectful and respectable, the whole nine yards. So what's been going on with her with respect to Arcane Logos and Jason Burns and others is mind-boggling. Now, I had... I was even a little bit reluctant to make a video or to get involved for fear of tainting Fiona with the atheist brush. Because that's what's been happening. And that doesn't just, it, that doesn't stop with her. It also extends to the Bible Thumping Wingnut and Matthew 419 and their recent friction with some fellow Christians. They've, um, They've been mocked and laughed at for having any kind of uh, atheist viewership on their channels or any kind of communication with atheists. There's an interesting dichotomy going on here. It might even be a trichotomy, possibly a quadcotomy. I'm not sure. If you can keep track, you can let me know. Because we have these Christians, and, and the Christians I'm speaking of here is sort of loosely a group that consists of like the Triple R gang. Um, and I'm not sure who the third R is actually, to be honest with you. I mean, I, you know, I only pay so much attention. So Ran and Ra and uh, this guy with the glasses, um, Iron Cross, obviously Arcane, and uh, to some degree, Jason Burns and Veckel and G-Man, but not, not necessarily all... This isn't applicable to all of them all the time. But what I've noticed is, on the one hand, they'll say, you can't prove to me that you're a Christian. Or as Ra would say on his uh, Skype channel, it says, um, just because you say you're saved, it doesn't mean you are. And that's interesting logic, because of course, it can be turned around the other direction. But when it is turned around the other direction, they speak with all kinds of authority. They know what the Father wants. They know what a true Christian is. They can tell who's saved and who isn't. So it's only applicable, you know, in one direction. This is a one-way valve. This, this uh, you can't prove to me that you're a Christian deal. And so they sit in judgment of other Christians uh, a lot. And I've noticed that these Christian relationships a lot of times, again, amongst, you know, these more specific people, there are other people, Christians, like Fiona, like someone like Jeff Heisenberg and some other people like that, that are much less tentative because I think they're based more on on a real genuine human-to-human -human sort of relationship. But a lot of these Christian relationships are very tentative. And I've witnessed this because you have someone like, for instance, uh, the Bible Thumping Wingnut in Matthew 419 and Raw 5069. Their relationship has become strained of late. And when it seems to be uh, strained is when there's a difference in a, in uh, opinion theologically. And suddenly, uh, they're being cast out, right? No, you're no longer, you are no, you, you are now a false, you are a cartoon Christian, you might be a fake Christian, etc., etc. That's interesting to watch. And they sit uh, uh, very much in judgment of other Christians, which boggles my mind, because I thought you weren't supposed to do that. That's very interesting to me. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to sit in judgment of really anybody else, but certainly not your fellow Christians. And if you're going to say, <laughs> you can't prove to me that you're a Christian, that works in the inverse, clearly. I mean, if it doesn't, you're t we're talking about some really amazing special pleading here. And to sit in judgment of someone like Fiona or, you know, 
and and it's really funny because. Uh, it's easy to convict them with their own theology. Now, you might say, well, Mike, you don't believe in Scripture. You can't use Scripture. Well, I don't need to believe in it. This is the manual. You're telling me this is your belief system. Here's the manual. If I look in the manual and find some instructions, all I have to do is convict you based on that. You're not being consistent with what you say is your belief set. It doesn't. I don't have to believe it at all. You're just you're being a hypocrite. You're not being consistent with your own belief set. And of course, it goes without saying, but I will say it to all you Christians who are doing all this infighting, it's laughable that any one of you should turn to an atheist and say, you're a fool for not believing, when what you're really doing is expecting us to enter some sort of a lottery and just hope we pick the right Christian, because to hear you guys talk, you can't all be right. Not if you're calling someone, for instance, Matthew for Satan, which I'll get to in a minute. Right? You're expecting us, I mean, have a unified message for crying out loud, you know? You're expecting us to essentially join a lottery. And of course, it will not matter whose theology we decide is the ultimate one. We're going to have all the other guys telling us, hey, you're following a wolf in sheep's clothing right? You're following the wrong guy. That guy's going to lead you straight to hell, which I've been told by Christians before, about other Christians. That guy will lead you straight to hell. Just choose right, atheists. But what do I know, right? I'm just an atheist. You know, when it comes to these tentative relationships and all of that. And Fiona isn't the only one who's gone through this. And by the way, um, about Fiona, the thing is, reasonable people, you know, I said this to Fiona in a text comment somewhere, reasonable people never needed proof that Fiona had a PhD. Reasonable people with any level of discernment at all can tell by the way she conducts herself, the type of person that she is, that she's not making that crap up. But again, we get to this tentative relationship with Christians when it comes to disagreements. Because then they're very quick to throw each other to the wolves right? So Fiona's a Christian, etc., etc. Oh, she seems to support the theory of evolution or, you know, however that came about that she got into arguments with people about the theory of evolution. And uh, now we're going to question her integrity. The PhD is, point, is, is, is a non-issue in all this. What you were doing was you were questioning her integrity and you didn't think to do that until you had a disagreement. Philosophically, theologically, right? That's pretty shameful. But reasonable people never needed that. right? And it's pretty shameful that you would judge Fiona or Tim or Len for the fact that they actually have some support from some atheists. That is just shameful. And again, I thought you weren't supposed to judge. I watched their, I don't know if it was a Triple R gang hangout or whatever, where they talked more about Len and Tim. And Iron Cross, well, all of them were, were pretty much, um, oh, I forgot to mention Sabella. They were kind of all calling them names. Uh, Matthew for Satan came out, a Bible-thumping nut job, I think it was, and Bible-thumping jellyfish. At one point, I think it was Iron Cross who said, I've forgiven Tim. It's like, really? Tim, is this the Tim you're calling Bible-thumping nut job? And it was in another video where I think it was Iron Cross himself, and forgive me, I'm not up on scripture, was quoting, I think it was Matthew chapter 25, wherever it is that says how you're supposed to treat your enemies, right? Hint, it's like good, right? Like where are the persecuted Christians who love their enemies? I don't see any, right? There's a lot that claim to be persecuted, but none of them do the thing. None of them love the enemy part. And he was talking about that chapter, uh, and he was saying it's something we really struggle with as Christians. That's a tough one. Well, you could at least make it look like you're trying. Just a little bit, eh? <laughs> you might have some credibility if you looked like you were trying a little bit. Because it's one thing to be face-to-face, -face, butting heads with someone like, say, uh, I've seen, you know, between Alex Botton and Tim, you know, back in the day. 
and 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 having a little bit of difficulty restraining yourself when you're in a direct combative relationship and someone's calling you out but you were having you were having a little love fest you were in a warm cozy environment of all like-minded people and you can't even keep from calling people names just repeatedly and Matthew for Satan I mean I can't think of much more of an insult to a Christian than that like how <laughs> It's a joke. That is a joke. You stand convicted by what you claim is your set of beliefs. Not by me, not by any other atheist. Possibly by God, if there really is one. Because that's his manual, right? But if there isn't a God, regardless of any of that, you stand convicted by your lack of consistency with what you say are your own beliefs. And it's pretty shameful the way you have treated Len and Tim simply for a disagreement and especially Fiona I mean I'm not really here to to defend Len and Tim they're big boys they can handle themselves I have a lot more respect I will say this I have a lot more respect for them lately in the way they conduct themselves based on their stated beliefs than any of this lot that I'm talking about here I have a real disdain for this um, you treated me like an atheist, and uh, that person's acting like an atheist, you know, but we are the light of the world. As though just saying it makes it so, right? Remember, these are the same people who say just saying it doesn't make it so, right? That's only for the other guy, right? So, you know... <laughs> Uh, whoever it was, it was Shani, I think, that was crying about how she was treated in a hangout. She said, you treated me like an atheist, you know. I'm not an atheist. And Jeff Heisenberg had a wonderful comment. And Jeff, you are... If I had to, you know, sort of say what I could see a Christian to be, uh, you're dynamite. Uh, you are a stand-up dude. I just got to say that. Jeff had said, you might as well have said, you know, how could you treat me like that? I'm not a Jew, you know. Very good point. And they'll talk in their hangouts about how, you know, the Christians are sort of automatically the virtuous, automatically automatically the upstanding citizens, and so-and-so is acting like an atheist, or an atheist would do X. Veckel's quite bad for that as well, lumping all atheists into one basket. Well, I'm sorry, just saying it doesn't make it so. Claiming to be a Christian means nothing to me. Your virtue is shown. Heck, I thought it was biblical. By their fruits ye shall know them. Your virtue is demonstrated by your actions and what you do and how you treat people and nothing else. Not a claimed theology, nothing else. That goes for an atheist or a theist. What you do dictates how you are perceived. What you do dictates your virtue. You don't get to say, I'm automatically the light of the world because I profess to believe this book. And you, because you don't believe this book, are automatically uh, non-virtuous slime. Again, this is from the people who say that they believe in something that says you're not supposed to judge other people. But what do I know? I'm just an atheist. Right? This is so much the sort of uh, splinter and plank thing, right? Which, incidentally... Now that I'm onto the splinter and the plank, the majority of times I've ever heard the thing about the splinter and the plank, you know, to remove the plank from your own eye before you complain about the splinter in your neighbor's eye or whatever it is there. Whenever I hear that, it's from someone putting that on someone else, right? Someone might be being critical and they will say that. But the way I interpret that uh, is that I think it's meant to be a lot more instructive and it's meant to be internalized. It's meant to it's meant to be a a self control. It's meant to be an introspective thing, to control your criticisms. It's not meant to be thrown out at everybody else who might criticize you. I don't think that's what it's meant to do. I think it's meant for you to modify your own behavior, your own criticisms and critiques of other people. I think that's been misused, grossly misused, as a tool of defense and offense by Christians. But what do I know? I'm just an atheist. I think, personally, I think if you're a self-professed Christian, a believing Christian, that phrase should never come out of your mouth except as 
during sort of Bible study where you're you're overall talking about those things. But I don't think that was ever meant to be as a as a gotcha thing, right? But what do I know? I'm just an atheist. I'm going to wrap this up because I know it's kind of bouncing around. Uh, shame on all of you for the way you've treated Fiona, first of all. She didn't deserve any of that. She's a sweetheart. She's a smart person. Uh, she's very, very respectful. And the only reason any of this has come up is because you have a disagreement, a fundamental disagreement, philosophically. And that's just a really crappy reason to throw someone to the wolves, especially someone like her. And really the same with Len and Tim, you know. At one point you guys were all brothers in Christ. Now you're basically saying that they're uh, Satan's henchmen because you have a fundamental disagreement. These are very, very tenuous relationships. If I were in the Triple R gang or any of these other groups, I would be looking around at the people around me and thinking, this is uh, thin ice I'm on here, shaky ground. I wonder how many of these people will be my friends a year from now, will be still calling me their brother in Christ, and how many of them will have thrown me to the wolves because uh, some difference in, in opinion has, has surfaced. <laughs> I can easily stand in judgment of the people I'm speaking of in this video because I don't profess any such thing as this concept that one shouldn't judge another. And I do so not because I believe in your scripture, but I do so because this is what you're telling me you believe. So if you're telling me that this is the owner's manual for you, and then you act in a manner not consistent with that owner's manual, then you're being a hypocrite. You're being inconsistent. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you'll all throw this out there as, uh, as a bunch of flailing around by an atheist. And I think if you do, that's your loss. Heck, maybe he's speaking to you through me. Do you ever think of that? Thanks for watching.